ここにはカーブソーマニーサクマニータラニココニワカーブソーマニーサクマニータラニココニワカーブソーマニーサクマニータラニココニワカーブソーマニーサクマニータラニココニワカーブソーマニーサクマニータラニココニワカーブソーマニーサクマニータラニココニワカーブソーマニーサクマニータラニココニワカーブソーマニーサクマニータラニココニワカーブソーマニーサクマニータラニココニワカーブソーマニーサクマニータラニココニワカーブソーマニーサクマニータラニココニワカーブソーマニーサクマニータラニココニワカーブソーマニーサクマニータラニココニワカーブソーマニーサクマニータラニココニワカーブソーマニーサクマニータラニココニワカーブソーマニーサクマニータラニココニワカーブソーマニーサクマニータラニココニワカーブソーマニーサクマニータラニココニワカーブソーマニーサクマニータラニココニワカーブソーマニーサクマニータラニココニワカーブソーマニーサクマニータラニココニワカーブソーマニーサクマニータラニココニワカーブソーマニーサクマニータラニココニワカーブソーマニーサクマニータラニココニワカーブソーマニーサクマニータラニココニワカーブソーマニーサクマニータラニココニワカーブソーマニーサクマニータラニココニワカーブソーマニーサクマニータラニココニワカーブソーマニーサあ、mm-hmm. 
We speak English in this house. Do you miss that? Why do you ask that, girl? There's not going to be another boat, is there? The blockade won't last forever. Does that make a difference? Sometimes I miss it. Sometimes I will look along the beach. There is your father, Matilda, and he's walking towards me. And me? And you, yes. Your father is walking towards us both. Get up! Come on, lazy bones, you've got school. What are you talking about? School's been closed for months. We haven't got a teacher. You do now. <laughs> Thank you for coming. I wasn't sure you would. I'm sure I would. Look, I'll be honest. <clears throat> I, I have no wisdom. I'm not a teacher. But I will try my best. That is my promise to you, children. Yes? Yes, Mr. Watt. Yes, Mr. Watt. Yes, Popeye. <laughs> well, I, I know that some of you call me Popeye, and that's fine. I actually quite like Popeye. Yes, Mr. Watt. Yes, Mr. Watt. Yes, 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 I want this to be a place of light, no matter what happens. So, the first thing we must do is clear this space for learning. And I have saving some batteries for a special occasion. So I put all the windows and we've got all the rubbish off the desks. family name being Pirip, my Christian name, Philip. 
My infant tongue could make of both names nothing longer or more explicit than Pip. So I called myself Pip and came to be called Pip. Yes, well, I welcome questions. And if you do have a question, perhaps you'd be kind enough to tell me your name. Daniel C. It's nice to meet you, Daniel. Should we call your Popeye a Mr. Watson, Mr. Pip? Those words were not mine, Daniel. They belong to Mr. Dickens. The words that I think can make a difference in our lives. And tomorrow, I will introduce you to Mr. Dickens. That's a white man's name. No, Matilda. You had wrong. Popeye is the last white man around here. There's no others. But Mr. Watts says there is. Hey, Liela. You are not a white man named Mr. Dickens. It's a here now. No, but I should have a one black man. I should have named Mr. Dickens. <laughs> well, Matilda, suppose you look in this lab, Mr. Dickens. Talk him I'm not going to put generator blue, you mean, Laha? Now, look if you can come by my place with some rice. Why walk him only one time, white man? Laha! What's your name? Mabel, Mr. Watts. Very pleased to meet you, Mabel. My mother was thinking Mr. Dickens might have some malaria tablets. My dad wants some kerosene. What about some beer? <laughs> Where is Mr. Dickens? He's right here. The line you heard yesterday was the first line of great expectations by the greatest English writer of the 19th century, Charles Dickens. Now, when you read the work of a great writer, you are making that person's acquaintance. So you could say that you've already met Charles Dickens on the page, so to speak, although you won't know him for a while. When will we know him? Well, I hope some of you will know him by the time we finish the book. The book is 59 chapters long. You read a chapter a day. Sixth of February, nineteen ninety. Sorry. Um, we'll know Mr. Dickens on the sixth of February, next year. <laughs> well, I'll take your word for it. Uh, My name is Matilda. Matilda, it's a lovely name. How did you get such a pretty name? The Australians at the mine gave it to Dad to give Mom to give me. You could say that Mr. Dickens got Pip's name from his father, too. Who knows what else you might have in common? Right. Who wants to meet Mr. Dickens? I give Pirip as my father's family name on the authority of his tombstone and my sister, Mrs. Joe Gargery who married the blacksmith. As I never saw my father or my mother, and never saw any likeness of either of them, for their days were long before the days of photographs, my first fancies regarding what they were like were unreasonably derived from their tombstones. The shape of the letters on my father's gave me an odd idea that he was a square, stout, dark man with curly black hair. From the character and turn of the inscription, also Georgiana, wife of the above, I drew a childish conclusion that my mother was freckled and sickly. To five little stone lozenges, each about a foot and a half long, which were arranged in a neat row beside their grave, and was sacred to the memory of five little brothers of mine, who 
gave up trying to get a living exceedingly early in that universal struggle. I am indebted for a belief I religiously entertained that they had all been born on their backs with their hands in their trousers pockets. Never taken them out in this state of existence. At such a time, I found out for certain that this bleak place overgrown with nettles was the churchyard. doing here? I came to see my brother. I'm sorry. I never really knew them. I actually used to think they'd been born like that, on their backs, with their hands in their trouser pockets. Just never taken them out. I prefer to think of them that way. You did it! Get down. Stay there. Wait! Come here! No, don't do it! Stop your noise! Keep still! The rock is dry! Don't cut my throat, sir! Don't shoot me! Break it, sir! Hip! You know what fire is? Yes, sir. And middles. You bring a lot to me. The old battery. You do it. You should be delivered. Yes, uh, not like the battery in my radio. The battery, in this case, means uh, a military encampment, a place with guns. Like the no-go zone, where the rebels are. Yes, kind of. That's very good, sir. <laughs> So he stole his mother's pork pie. Pips an orphan. He lives with his sister. Brought him up by hand. <laughs> Sounds like she needed to use her hand on him a little more. What would you do, girl? If a man was hiding in the jungle and asked you to steal from me, would you do that? No. Popeye should be teaching you kids proper behavior. From now on, I want to know everything that happens in that book. You hear me, Matilda? Yes, ma'am. That was a memorable day to me. For it made great changes in me. But it is the same with any life. Imagine... One selected day, struck out of it, and think how different its course would have been.
exile, sending him to Australia. My dad's in Australia. Do you miss him? Guess I'm lucky. Why? I never knew my father long enough to miss him. You ready, Pip? We best get back before your sister goes on the rampage. Will I see you again? Yeah. Who's that? She's a friend. Does she have your name? Matilda! What the heck you doing, gal? Mr. Watts? Yes, Daniel. What's it like to be white? I mean, what's it like to be white, or what's it like to be white here? Both. A bit like what the last mammoth must have felt, I suppose. It's lonely, at times. I don't know, it's like being black. No more. <laughs> We only feel black around white people. Yes, well, I'd say the same is true for me. Matilda, she would like to do the honors? This is my mom, Dolores. Dolores Naimo. Mrs. Dana, please come in. Thank you. I know you kids have been hearing some story from Mr. Watts, but I'm here to tell you that stories have a job to do. They can't just lie around like lazy bone dogs. <laughs> they have to teach you something. That's why I brought a book. The good book. When the missionaries came, they taught us to believe in God. But when we asked to see God, they wouldn't introduce him to us. So many people preferred to live by the wisdom of the crabs and the fire fish that is shaped like the southern star. You must believe in something. God said, let there be light. And there was light. There is no sentence more beautiful in the world than that one. Yes, Father. What is the wisdom of the crabs? Mr. Watts, can I ask you something? Of course. Is it strange to feel like I know Pip? I mean, really know him? I think that is probably the greatest compliment you could pay Mr. Dickens. Do you know him too? My Pip is probably not exactly the same as your Pip, but yes, I believe I do. Today, we are not going to start with great expectations. Today, we are very lucky to have Mabel's mother, Mrs. Tanganon. Thank you, Mr. Watt. I'm here today, hoping to surprise you kids. What if I tell you that some gardens begin their life in the ocean? The hot sea floats on the water, then it washes up on the sand. Seven days later, the sun and the wind dried as light as the husk. Three months later, 
a little sapling grows. Its white flowers open and look back to the sea where it came from. Why am I telling you this, children? Because its demon makes a fierce flame and gives away the mosquitoes. Right. This is Tangunani, the heart sea. <laughs> All right, then. Now, what do we get to? The best place to find broken dreams is down on the wharf. All those dead fish with their eyes and mouths open, they just can't believe that they are not in the sea and will never be again. By the way, fish, they go to heaven. Don't believe any other shit you hear. Things. Boys who shout have mud in their souls. Stay away from boys who abuse silence. <laughs> Other than that, I don't want to tell you girls where to shop. <laughs> to kill a pig, you get two fat uncles to hold it down and whack it on the chest. How big do these uncles have to be? Fat ones. Fat is good. Skin is no bloody good. <laughs> Poor oh, but no bloody good. Eh? <laughs> nice. <clears throat> Our conference was held in the state parlor. It was feebly lighted by one candle. It began with a strange gentleman drawing the candle to him. Looking over some entries in his pocket. <laughs> My name is Jaggers. I am a lawyer in London. Now, Joseph Gardner. <laughs> yes, sir. I am the bearer of an offer to relieve you of this young fellow, your apprentice. You would not object to cancel his indentures? Well, the answer is no. Very well. Recollect the admission you have made and don't try to go from it presently. Well, who's are going to try? I didn't say anyone is going to try. <laughs> Now, I return to this young fellow. The communication I have got to make is that he has great expectations. It is a most miserable thing to feel ashamed of home. I had believed in the best parlor as a most elegant saloon. I had believed in the front door as a mysterious portal. I had believed in the forge as the glowing road to manhood and independence. Within a single year, all this was changed. Now, it was all coarse and common. The change was made in me. The thing was done. Well or ill done, excusably or inexcusably, it was done. Boy. 
have you been, girl? Just playing on the beach. I don't want you out alone at night anymore. What could I become with these surroundings? How could my character fail to be influenced by them? But I knew very well that it was not all good. I think the sooner you leave here, the better. Thank you, Mr. Jaggers. Thank you so much. Matilda! <laughs> my dream is out, Matilda. What are you talking about? Well, I believe that Miss Havisham intends me for Estella after all. Matilda, I'm leaving. Leaving? Pip has been given the opportunity to become whoever he wants. It means he's free to make bad choices. Like Estella? You're not very fond of Estella, are you? She's cruel. Find your own kid. Do you believe in the devil, Matilda? Mr. Watt says that the devil is just a symbol, not living flesh. Nor is his pip. But you can't hear the devil's voice. You can hear pips. That's it. You're not going back to the school anymore. Why? So I can be dumb like you? <coughs> if it wasn't for you, 
We've been in Australia with Dad. Heaven knows we need never be ashamed of our tears, for they are rain upon the blinding dust of Earth, overlying our hard hearts. I was better after I had cried than before, more sorry, more aware of my own ingratitude, more gentle. We changed again and yet again, and it was now too late and too far to go back. And I went on, and the mists had all solemnly risen now, and the world lay spread before me. My daughter, my lovely Matilda, says she doesn't believe in the devil. She believes in Pep. Well, Mrs. Nymo, what if I were to say to you that on the page, Pip and the devil have the same status? Each one strikes out on their own. Each one has the chance to make their own mistakes. And to abandon his family? How will Pip even know if he's made a mistake? If there is no God and no devil, how will he know what's right from wrong? Mr. Watts here thinks he can know all things. But for the rest of us people, and that includes you, my beautiful flower, Matilda, pack the teaching of the good book into your person. That way, you kids will be able to say, Popeye here, because I'm not going to. Thank you, Mrs. Limo, for such an illuminating lesson on the relationship between good and evil. Once again, you've given us much food for thought. A shrine. Pip in the Pacific. Oh, why not? Great expectations doesn't tell the whole of Pip's life. Ah! Uh, yeah, you're quite right. All in good time. Mr. Watts? Miss Nana. Pip's different in London. I don't understand why he lets Herbert Prophet call him Handel. Pip is like an immigrant. He's moving from one level of society to another. A change of name is as good as a change of clothes. So we all need to change sometimes to help us on our way. Here, Brandon Joe. He did. It's not easy to be a perfect human being, Matilda. Go, 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 go
just like your names for security reasons. You! Are you cool? Hey, name blue. Mama. Dolores. D O L O R E S. Are you? Matilda. I noticed there are no young men in the village. Plenty of girls, but no young men. Why is that? We saw a signal on the beach. What is PIP? What is PIP? Pip, Mr. Pip. Mr. Pip, is his name on this list? Pip belongs to Mr. Dickens, sir. Who is Mr. Dickens? He's a member of Maxim Mania. Move, 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 move. You are Mr. Dickens? Yes, I am. Where is Pip? Sir, Pip... Pip is, is a creation. He's a, he's a character in a book. I, I understand the confusion, but if you will allow me to show you the book, you will see that Pip is a character from the novel Great Expectations. It's a novel, it's a story, a wonderful story. Matilda, would you mind? I've left the book on my desk. a book. Fine. Find me the book or find me some paper. <laughs> Oh, my God. 
plus our one something, so come up with line also help him all rebels. I will give you one more chance. Bring me this man, Pip, or I will ban it all. Please, sir, the man you're looking for is, he's a fiction, he's a character out of a book. No. You will speak when I ask you. I am not interested in any more of your lies.
What's going on? You stay here. Oh, John Stella. <laughs> Understand that. I know you lost all your books. I wrote some things about great expectations. That's very good, Matilda. Would you like me to leave it? Put it in the pocket of my jacket. I have something to tell you.
our Father, which art in heaven, Mr. Watts, your grace was the cleverest of all us girls. We all went to school together. Thank you, Dolores. Grace could speak German. And hold a breath underwater for longer than anyone. And I knew him better. She was beautiful, too. And remember the day she lost the tooth? She was lying in the canoe, watching the fish and the sea wave came and smacked that canoe right in the mail. <laughs> when she got her first pair of shoes, she was so proud. She carried them everywhere. Of course, she didn't want them to get dirty. <laughs> what about you? Grace lived in a beautiful big house in London. She lived in one part of the house, I lived in the other. But it was very hard not to notice Grace. I'd never seen anyone so black, with teeth so white. And she would come by uh, every evening for a cup of tea and she would sit across the table from me and then one evening <laughs> she she brought her chair around to my side and she took my hand and she placed it in her lap Darling Grace gave me great happiness. None greater than when she gave me a child. A baby girl to whom we gave the name Sarah. Just couldn't stop looking at her. We had a room in the middle of the house between us. Sarah. We filled this room with our thoughts, our memories, and our histories. We would take it in turns to write it on the wall. And Grace traced Sarah's lineage from her all the way back to a flying fish. Was I on that wall? Yes, I believe you were. Sarah felt a meningitis before her first birthday. Grief. Grace couldn't, she couldn't move, didn't speak. She never left her bed. And I tried, I, we moved homes, we moved countries. And finally, I thought that the best way would be for Grace to reinvent herself. I don't know how many of you here know who the Queen of Sheba was. It's in the Bible. The Queen of Sheba was a very wise black woman who wanted to see if she could match Solomon's legendary wisdom. And she communed with him of all that was in her heart. And nothing was hid.
We've all lost a lot in recent times. Those losses, I think we should use them to remind ourselves of the things that we can never lose. Our minds and our imaginations. Where are our imaginations? Up there and in here. All right, let's try something different. All of you close your eyes. Now, in a voice that only you can hear, I want you to say your name. You say it to yourself, everyone. Now, no one ever in the whole history of the world, no one has ever used your voice to say your name. Belongs to you. No one can take that away from you. When Mr. Dickens sat down in 1860, he started to write Great Expectations. The first thing he had to do was to clear a space for the voice of Pip. And that is what my friend Matilda has done. She started to write the story of Pip. She has given us a special task, a sacred task. We have to retrieve the story of Great Expectations. So, who's with me? Yes, Christopher. Pip wanted to be a gentleman. Yes, he did. Can anyone be a gentleman? Yes, they can. Even a poor person? Absolutely, a poor person could be a gentleman. A, a gentleman... A gentleman is someone who never forgets their manners, no matter what the situation is, no matter how... Terrible, how awful money and social standing got nothing to do with it. A gentleman always tries to do the right thing. Where have you been? School, of course. What? With the Dumbaga Popeye? Mom. I know you talked Mr. Watts into coming back. <laughs> <laughs> this will remove Pip from the detective comfort of home to the unknown metropolis. Metropolis. Uh, all right, let's say that this here is our little village. And in Pip's time, Greater London would be this immense metropolis. We've got a new roof on our place. Excuse us, Heather. What's wrong? It's nothing. I'm just I'm running late for a meeting with Miss Havisham. I'll walk with you. Um, it's the young Miss Havisham. Stella. Anyways, it was very nice to see you. Who was that? Nobody. His name is Pip. Or have you abandoned that too? 
along with Joe and everyone else. And you're so much better. I'm sorry, Matilda, but you have no idea what is expected of a gentleman. I do. I just don't see one here. Have you on Shadow to play with? Shh. Tilda, what are you doing creeping around here? What Estella says to Pip, do you not have your own Shadow to play with? Yes. Very good. Do you want to write this down? Did Mrs. Swartz read Great Expectations? Grace? Sadly, no. She tried. Till finally she said that she would reach the end if I would do the same with the Bible. And that was that. The thing is, you can't really pretend to read a book. Your eyes will always give you away. Your eyes and your breathing. The house could be on fire. A reader deep in a book wouldn't even notice until the, the wallpaper was in flames. And for me, Great Expectations was such a book. It gave me permission to change my life. Reinvent myself. Matilda. There's a boat. It being a night after the full moon. Gilbert's father could take us out to meet it. A few hours on the open sea and you'd be in the Solomon Islands. In Australia? Solomon's. It'd be up to you. Your mum, too, Matilda. It's very important that you don't tell anyone about this. Not even Dolores. Until I get the word. Do you understand? Since we had you been. Last time we were here, you were concealing a man named Pip. Have you decided to hand him to me yet? <coughs> I thought not. Move. 
I will ask you again for your name. father's family name being Pirip, and my Christian name Philip. My infant tongue could make a both names nothing longer or more explicit than Pip. So I called myself Pip and came to be called. Finished with being liked. Who saw this? No, Daniel. I saw it, sir. <coughs> so he doesn't know what he's saying. <coughs> he doesn't know what he's saying, sir. No, Would you like to go with him? Now, once more I will ask you, who saw the white man die? Who saw? I did. Sir, I saw a man chopped up the white man and feed him to the pigs. He was a good man. I am here as God's witness. I am God's witness. Say, I will be God's witness.
Take care. No, Monsieur, Monsieur. You. Are you related to this woman? She's my mother. Yeah. Move, move. Walk about. Move. 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 Does anyone else have anything to say? Stand up. Stand up. Please, please, sir. I beg you. Have mercy, she's just a little girl. Now you beg me. And for what? What will you give me to save your daughter? Take me instead. My men have had you already. You have nothing left for me. Take my life. Did you hear that? Your mother has offered a life for you. What do you say? Matilda, don't say anything. No, I want to hear. What do you say to your mother? Very well.
Have to go, Matilda. Matilda, that's a nice name. Where did you get that name? Some eating to catch up on. I bought you birthday cakes for every one I've missed. Guess you were. Still a little gold in my head. It's nice. All right. Well, I'll let you settle in. Got a new student today. Welcome, Matilda. Matilda is from. I came here from Honiara in the Solomon Islands. Oh, right. It says on your form that. My mum couldn't come, so I came here to help look after my dad. Okay. Right. So if everyone can open their maths books to page 348. I'm just going to pick up where we left off yesterday. So yesterday we were having a look at making up equations with algebra and today we're just going to carry on with using equations to solve problems. So the first example there at the top of page 348, if I think of a number and then multiply it by 7, I get the same result as if I had multiplied the number by 4. Oh, 
Wait till after school. The man traveled from Sydney to see you. Some kind of lawyer. So what's this about exactly? Uh, you're aware of the situation in Bougainville since the blockade was lifted? You've been there? How long since you were there? It's been ten years. I assume you remember Mr. Thomas Watts? He was my teacher in Bougainville. Mr. Watts passed away during the conflict. Did you know that? I'm sorry. But it seems he left a will which bequeaths much of his property to you. Mind you, we've had a devil of a time trying to find you. It's primarily his house, half a house. It's a flat, really. The other half reverts to his wife. His wife's dead. No. No, I can assure you, June Watts is still very much alive. And where's the flat? In Gravesend, in London. Mrs. Watts? I thought you were from Australia. I am. Go ahead. It's yours. I'll put the kettle on.
when I'm got the strawberry cream especially. Thank you. It was lovely of you to see me today, Mrs. Watts. Your husband had a big influence on me. Tom did? He was my teacher. A long time ago in Bougainville. So you knew her then? The other woman? I married a weak man, Matilda. I don't want to sound unkind, but it's true. Tom was not a brave man. He should have left me properly rather than carry on the way he did. I'm sorry, Mrs. Watts. I didn't know about any of that. What under the bridge now? We were young. Everyone was young in those days. I suppose you knew about Tom's theatre thing. There she is, Queen of Sheba. <laughs> Funny idea, is that director? Avant-garde, Tom said. Queen of bloody Sheba. I didn't think about Grace much. I didn't give her nearly enough thought. She was always laughing. It was like living next door to someone who was permanently drunk. Couldn't imagine him on her island. What was he like? When you last saw him? He was a gentleman. He was always a gentleman, Mrs. Watts. I'm not going to take the flat. It's not mine. It's yours. Thank you so much, Mrs. Watts. I'll pour the tea. No. That's okay. Thank you. You've given me so much already. So, what brings you to the Dickens Museum? It's a long story. Did you meet Mr. Dickens?
I've met Mr. Dickens. That is not him. Yes, the Dickens I knew told stories too. He wore a white suit and a red clown nose. Collected shells from sparkling blue waters. Pip. about tears for they are rain upon the blinding dust of earth overlying our hard hearts I was better after I had cried than before more sorry more aware of my own ingratitude more gentle we changed again and yet again and it was now too late and too far to go back I went on, and the mists had all solemnly risen now, and the world lay spread before me. What is the wisdom of the crabs? Well, my mom always said that wind and rain are on the way for crab digs straight down and blocks the whole living marks like sun rays. Who is your mom? <laughs> Sometimes I miss him. Sometimes I will look along the beach. There is your father, Matilda. He's walking towards me. And me? And you, yes. Your father is walking towards us both. is Dolores Mary Naimo. My father's is Joseph Francis Naimo. My father worked with the Australians who gave him the name Matilda. He gave it to my mother for her to give me. And so they called me Matilda. And I came to be known as Matilda.
You wait to fall as if you knew Above the clouds there's only blue And far beyond you'll come back down To join your shadow on the ground And we are made to reveal Everything we feel as we go Rising and falling with the moon and the tide Lifted from the land, the ship sails on the morning sea, an eagle flying over me, and we are made to reveal everything we feel as we go rising and falling with the moon and the tide. We go. Sinica no, you are Tabo Kumano.